Grind Set. Inside the mind of successful entrepreneurs with your host, Cynthia Daniels and William Sprague. And we blanketed the city with this questionnaire. What do you think we are? What do you think we offer? What do you want to see us be? Hmm. And that was pivotal. Welcome back to another episode of Grind Set. I'm your host, Cynthia Daniels, Chief Event Strategist of Cynthia Daniels and Company. And I'm your co-host, Williams Brack, asset-based lender at First Horizon Bank. And today we have a really interesting guest. We have Denny Riley, co-owner of the Majestic Grill. I think we all have been there. We know <laughs> and love the food. So I'm excited to hear the story behind it. Yeah, absolutely. And I've been looking forward to this interview because I sit on the uh, Downtown Memphis Commission with Denny. Okay. She's our chairwoman. Oh, cool. Of course, I've been to the Majestic Grill. Her and her husband, Patrick, were voted power couple here in Memphis. And so wow. I'm just looking forward to hearing her background, yeah. the history of the Majestic, and talking about the future and operations of the restaurant business. Well, we've got a lot to learn today, and I'm super excited. Yeah, absolutely. You've been listening. You're there. Goodness, what's happening? You were doing it. Keep going. You're listening to Grind Set. Powered by the Kazookian Network, and we'll be right back with Denny Riley, co-owner of the Majestic Grill. Grind set on the Kazookian Network. The Event Doctor on the Kazookian Network. The thing is, is that it's the Event DR, which is known as the Event Doctor, but I, mm-hmm. I don't want to be too corny, like, okay, sure. the doctor's in or whatever. The Event Doctor. I don't want doctors to feel like, you're not a doctor. Why are you saying that? You know, we're here yeah. to talk about different events answer your questions, help you save your event, you know, stuff like that. The Event Doctor Podcast on the Kazookian Network. Kazookian! Grind Set on the Kazookian Network. As promised, we have Denny Riley, owner of Majestic Grill with us uh, at Grind Set. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I am good. I'm hungry already. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> I might be able to help with that. All mm-hmm. right. All right. So, look, we're going to jump right into it because we have a lot of stuff to cover in a short amount of time. Um, tell us a little bit about your background in restaurants and hospitality. Like, how did that even come about? Sure. I, um, I moved to Memphis when I was 23 okay. with the Promise Hilton merger. Oh, wow. Um, so I'm a hotel girl. So <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Moved here from Philly and, uh, and, and went to work. I was actually doing national sales recruiting, so I was traveling wow. quite a bit. Okay. But I figured, yeah, sure, I'll come to Memphis for three years. I like, mu- <laughs> I like music. I had the same Uh-oh. plan. That, that yeah, story yeah, again. Really. Huh? Yeah. yeah, here I here. am. Yep, yep. <laughs> 22 years later, I'm here. And uh, and and. I, you know, worked in hotels, and then I ended up. Um, <laughs> we went into the the everybody gets bought out and merch. I sat in the same desk oh, okay. for for three and a half years okay. and changed jobs eight times. Wow! You're kidding. And I said, I said, forget this. I'm getting out of the corporate life. Okay. And I um, wanted to do some do some good, so I went to go work for. Um, the Center for Southern Folklore and helped them move from Beale Street Very to Main cool Street. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I uh, did their first um, festival with them on Main Street with oh. Carla and Rufus Thomas. Oh, that that's was great. Awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Ep- wow. Right, did you have an event planning background? Yep, and I have an event planning background. <laughs> and then I ended up going to work for the Blues Foundation for okay. a while in... Um, I ended up um, as a, an event planner for, I was the director of operations for Destination King, which is now Leo Events. Oh, wow. Uh, wow. So, that's so cool. So, yeah. So, like <laughs> you, I have an events background. So, that. so that's, the, and it just kind of naturally led into the restaurant industry. Okay. Um, I always tell people that being in a restaurant and opening a restaurant and mm-hmm. running a restaurant is just like being an event planner it's just <laughs> you do the event day I'm after day, you, day every and day <laughs> major key alert yes yes and so you started a restaurant so take me back to the day obviously you went through hospitality event planning did you just wake up one day and said okay i'm done with event planning i want to open a restaurant like where did that click and, and change come from well i met this guy Ah, there's a guy <laughs> there's a uh-huh. guy um i met my my now husband um patrick riley he yeah. had moved um to memphis um from orlando shout out to via patrick Na- shout out to patrick <laughs> uh to nashville um he was working for gibson guitars at the time okay. um 
they were opening the lounge, which was a food and beverage so cool. <laughs> venue attached yeah. to their factories, right. which you have guitars and rock and roll and really good food. It's really awesome. Yeah, so cool. Sounds like a great concept. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that's actually how we met. We met through music. I was with the Blues Foundation at the ah. time. <laughs> I was doing a book signing for Bill Wyman. Okay. From the Rolling Stones. Yeah, that's cool. Legendary. Legendary. <laughs> and um, and I, I ran into a guitarist friend of mine from Atlanta, mm-hmm. um, Sean Costello, and he asked me to come to this gig. <laughs> and he said, well, I'm going to this new place at Gibson, and I don't think anybody's going to be there. They're not even open yet. I'd wow. really like a friendly face. And we went, and that's how he introduced me to Patrick. So that's how we met. That's a beautiful story. <laughs> yeah. And so we met over blues music. Yeah. Oh, which is cool. how Memphis is that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um and then we just we started dating and he was um he then um left there ran swig which is the silly goose space oh wow yeah. i've heard about that they said it was the best place to get martinis at one point it was heard this about really that. cool high-end martini bar yeah. um out of san antonio That's okay fantastic. and yeah. he opened that ran that for a while and then um we were we were seriously dating by then okay. and and we just started talking about oh, wouldn't it be cool you know we never really we weren't sure do we stay in memphis <laughs> do we move up north yeah. do we move back to ireland he's from ireland yeah. whoa wow okay. yeah and then we were approached by um by bells to um to take over the gordon beer space and mm. we thought you know what this is kind of cool this could be an opportunity uh, we just loved that building and the history of it absolutely danny here on grind set you're turning a uh, business podcast into a love story it's pretty, yeah <laughs> so cool it's pretty great Memphis all in through that <laughs> and, and so talk about your your business plan because you have a skill set in hospitality patrick has a skill set in chefery and chefing right and, mm-hmm. and cooking and so talk about the business plan, the process that you two put together to birth the Majestic Grill. Sure, absolutely. One of the things I think that helps us and has helped us from the beginning and contributed big to our success is our corporate backgrounds. Yep. Right. Um, because I have that hotel background and I was out there doing recruiting and training right. um, on the ground um, in the hotel industry. Um and he was, he had a corporate background um, in, in corporate restaurants right, as well. Right, perfect marriage. Um, yeah, which, yeah. Is, which is really important because, um, as, as you all know, it can be hard to navigate right. those structure things, yeah. yep. you know. And so we both came with this great background and binders full of, <laughs> of <laughs> training programs yeah. and things that he and I had both been um been involved in yes um and we were able to take that and take the passion of the hospitality industry and working with people and cooking food and providing this wonderful experience for people but marry that um so when we went through our business plan you know we set up our business plan we were trying to come up with names and this idea and and we were working with uh, another couple actually at the time who was helping us with our logo and and all of our graphics suzanne and andy ham Mm -hmm. and um Shout out to Suzanne and Andy. Yeah, Mm -hmm. they're they're a great creative team, and um and we kept coming we kept coming back to the history of the building. Mm Okay, um and that really kind of helped define Ah. what we were doing. Okay, um and so our whole business plan was basically like, okay, well we want to be this neighborhood restaurant. Mm Um, that's a little bit more high end, a right. little bit, a little bit nicer than just kind of a, you know, walk in mom and pop shop. But right. how do we do that, but also make it approachable so that, mm-hmm. you know, you can come in on a Tuesday night, <laughs> sit at the bar and jeans and a ball cap yeah. and get a burger. Yeah. And then on Friday night, you can come in on a date and yeah. get steak and wine and mission accomplished. <laughs> I've done both of those things. Same here. <laughs> <laughs> and so talk about the history of Majestic Grill a little bit or the space and then how long the business plan process took from birth and the idea to opening so the the building was built in 1913 okay. as the majestic number one theater mm-hmm. um and it was one of i don't know two dozen movie theaters up and down main street you're kidding it was i mean it was the thing to do yeah. a history lesson today <laughs> yeah yeah D- downtown memphis was just full of theaters yeah um and some of them like the orpheum were, were vaudeville theaters that was oh. a live theater yeah. right, um, right we were a silent picture house hmm. we had an organ and an orchestra pit <laughs> and they would send in the scores and the orchestra mm-hmm. would play along with the movie 
and uh, and so we were. It was a it was a great, wonderful. We have a few customers who still remember that <laughs> it was active until about 1927. Yeah. Okay, um, and then it became um, the Julius Lewis Men's Shop. Yes. which is where everybody got their suits. Okay. Um, and it was that into the 50s. And um, Henry Turley was a uh, the big and tall salesman when he was 14 there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ronnie Grisani worked yeah. there as a wow. kid. Wow. It's got a lot of history. Um, and then in the 70s, it was a warehouse mattress for Goldsmith. What? And then it became when Blue Light Studio, Elvis's photo studio, moved off of wow. moved off a of Beale. It became became Blue Light Studio, which yeah. is according to everybody where they all got their fake IDs. <laughs> <laughs> listen, I love it. That's that's a great initial history of the majestic. Yeah. And when we get back from the break, let's talk about current times, mm-hmm. right? Um, still the creation of the idea to the first opening day of Majestic, and then the operation of actually running a restaurant. And so that's what we'll talk about coming up. Um, You've been listening to Grind Set, powered by the Kazookian Network, and we'll be right back after the break. I'm Carol Coletta, host of Cities Now, a brand new show hosted here on the Kazookian Network. With Cities Now, we want to help listeners make smart decisions for their cities. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Little by little, the city is rebuilding itself with businesses such as urban farms and breweries. We'll interview the sharpest people on the thorniest issues facing Cities Now. Cities Now, part of the Kazookian Network. Welcome back to Grind Set. We're here with Denny Riley, co-owner of the Majestic Grill. Um, when we left off, we talked a lot about the history. But I'm curious, how did your business plan differ from pre-opening to opening? Um, the financial crisis of 2008 to how the business is operating today? Yes, it changed. <laughs> <laughs> Major key alert. <laughs> it, it changed. We, um, you know, I would say from opening or pre-opening to opening first six months, mm-hmm. we definitely stayed on course and, and definitely, you know, really focused on our business plan. And it, it stayed true to that. Um, maybe a couple of minor tweaks here and there, but. Um, so business plan is important. Business plan is important. <laughs> it is important. Um, and, you know, we had things, you know, we had a marketing, an opening marketing budget, yes. which is important. A lot Very of people important. forget that. You yes. know, we had a we had a nice chunk of money set aside for that. Yeah. We did a we did a roll up um, a teaser campaign, billboard campaign throughout the entire city. So that. there was this like buzz, like, what's the Majestic Grill? What's that going to be? We did that for a few months it's leading really up smart. to it. Now, how, how much, uh, how many years of savings did you have before you started Majestic? Oh, well, we had, we had a, a backer, so that helped. Um, we always tell people, we do a lot of counseling to people when they come to us, and we always tell them you should have at least three years in operating capital. Major key alert. That's very smart. Three years, because uh, you might not make it. I think what is the statistic? Ninety-eight percent of restaurants go out of business in the first year. Yep. Um, and it's you don't have the cash. You have to have the cash in the bank to not just pay yourself, right. but you know to operate, because um, you're not going to start making it until between year three and five. Wow. I'm sorry. I interrupted progression from <laughs> pre-business plan to OA to just the evolution of the business. Sure. So, you know, out of the gate, we're packed. People are lining up. Oh, we're the, the hot new. Worked. Yeah, the billboards worked. <laughs> it was great. Hot new restaurant. And back then there were a lot fewer new restaurants. Uh-huh. Um, so when you were the new restaurant, you were the new restaurant for a hot second. <laughs> okay. So it was, yeah. it was good. You know, yeah. the honeymoon lasted for a while. Nice. Um, you know, six months in, we're like, all right, we can do this. We did not start with brunch. We started, hey. yeah, we started, we did, we, we eased in. We did, um, we opened for, for uh, 30 days with okay. a discounted menu. Mm. A please forgive us menu. We're still working out the kinks. I love that. I've never heard that. Yeah. Before. So 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 do that. Yeah. Um, don't you're not charging everybody full price. Yeah. They can't fully complain if you mess it up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> forgive us. I love that. Genius. And um and and we opened up for lunch to start. Yeah. And then you know, and then we rolled in dinner. We didn't actually start brunch until I think year two, maybe. Wow. Okay. Uh, maybe a little bit less. I can't remember. It's a little fuzzy. We were working a lot back then. <laughs> um, but 
you know, we're hot, then about six to eight months in, it kind of sort of started to stall. We're okay. like, uh-oh, what's mm-hmm. going on? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sure another restaurant had opened and, and, and new, everybody another get another new one. And yeah. so that, that became the sexy new restaurant. So... Um, you know, so we were like, okay, what are we going to do? You know, we, we started looking at things, you know, a year in, we're like, oh, you know, is this going to make it? Yeah. Is, is this going to happen? A year and a half in, we're like, oh, man. All right. So we get, we're like, we really need to look at this. People are not understanding what we're trying to do. They're not okay. getting what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, so we actually, we, we, we still had the, the funds to hire a marketing company. So we did a marketing research company and, um, and we, we blanketed the city with this questionnaire. Oh, okay. um, what do you think we are? What do you think we offer? What do you want to see us be? Hmm. And that was pivotal. Okay. Because it came back. And I don't know if you had ever been to the restaurant back in 2006 when we opened. Okay. But the when enti- here yet. <laughs> it, looked, it looked very different than it did really? now. Really? Okay. We didn't have the movie screen. It was a big logo on the back, which is a sky, skyline. Okay. The entire restaurant was white and very modern looking top oh, to bottom. Wow. Oh, okay. Okay. And um Memphians like warm and cozy. They do. And that was one of the things that came out of this market wow. research was that it's just it's cold. They said it's mm-hmm. cold. Mm-hmm. So we took that from a decor standpoint and said, okay, we need to change the decor. And then mm-hmm. people just didn't get what we were trying to do. They okay. were like, what are you? Are you like this modern fusion restaurant? Are you this, yeah. Yeah. you know, are, are you a grill? Are you a bar? Are you a <laughs> Right, what grill are? with a barbecue. Right, What's going right, on? Right, right. What are you doing? <laughs> so we took all that, redid our business plan. Mm. We actually really didn't change much of the food. The food has pretty much stayed the same, our, our, the, the concept mm-hmm. of the food. Um, but how we tell our story changed. So we partnered up with Scott Blake, um, and he is a local uh, designer here, also um, head of the Victorian Village. He's a, he's oh, a, okay. Scott's fantastic. Scott does not do restaurants. Scott does opera sets and museum sets. But that makes sense now. But <laughs> how you tell your story matters yeah. is a how major you, key. Absolutely. 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 And so he helped us tell our story visually mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, because we decided to get back and regroup and really associate ourselves with the history of the building even more so than we did on the front end right so we formed um arts alliances with our community partners that Mm -hmm. we defined um and it was the orpheum the ballet because we were a theater so Mm -hmm. anybody that had kind of a theatrical connection became our charitable partners Well, on Grind Set, you know, we love to give advice to our listeners, right? A lot of our listeners are in their cubicles now trying to figure out, am I really ready to jump out there and start a business? So you just gave us an amazing example of how, you know, your business transitioned within the first year. I want to know what are some of the most earliest and valuable lessons you learned in your business? Who um, take time for yourself. Okay. If and when you can. Um working with your spouse yeah. is, is tough. <laughs> we'll get into um, that a little later. Yeah, yeah. Um, but take time for yourself. Yeah. Pay, pay yourself. A yes. lot of people forget to pay themselves. Okay. Um, listen to your employees. Listen to your constituents. Mm-hmm. Hire good people. This is a steadfast rule that we have had since day one okay. that we still have now is hire nice people. Mm-hmm. Major key alert. Yeah. If you're in the restaurant business, Hire nice people. You can train somebody to wait tables. You can train (laughs) people to bartend. You can train someone to cook. You can't train them to be a nice person. They have to love what they do and they have to love people. Wow. That's incredible. Um, You've given us so much valuable information. Uh, When we come back from the break, we're going to talk a little bit more about what it's like working with the spouse because they say they say two heads are better than one. But we'd love to know if that's indeed a fact. And we'll be right back after the break. My name is Richard Douglas Jones. I am one of the hosts for Black Nerd Power. Uh, Who am I? I am a a stand up comic. You may have seen me on Comedy Central, the LOL Network. I've been living this nerd life for a long time, like comic books and movies and all that other stuff. That's who we are. Just come hang out with us, man. Just geek out a little bit. It's okay. We won't tell. If you're a black nerd, you've had to hide that for most of your life. Black Nerd Power on the Kazookian Network. Kazookian! Prime set on the Kazookian Network. 
So we're back uh, with Denny, and this has been just an amazing interview. It's just gone by so quickly, and, and we want to touch on a few more things before we let you go. Um, you know, we talked about you entering this business with your husband, and I'd love to know what was it like in the beginning, working with the spouse, and how have you guys figured out your roles as the years have grown? It uh, it was tough. Um, we we <laughs> okay. got Just married. Be candid, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. tough. We got married, and six months later, opened the restaurant. Oh wow! So you know, <laughs> it's it's it was a high stress time. Yeah. Um, good stresses, bad stresses. Sure. Um, one thing that we did make sure that we did from the get go mm-hmm. was we always took two days off. Wow. We're open seven days a week. Okay. Um, but we always took two days off when we could. Okay. We took one day off with each other, hmm. and one day off by ourselves. Mm. That's major. Just a little me time, huh? You, you said it. You <laughs> yeah. said it earlier. And it's really important. And we had a rule that day, you know, do not call me. Do not talk to me. Do not. <laughs> yeah. And it really helped. Um, okay. And I was out in the front of the house and, and he was in the back of the house. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it is hard because you, you come home and you're exhausted. And those yeah. early days, you're working crazy hours. <laughs> um, you know, over the years, we've evolved. We had an incredible um, general manager that, that came in, Marla Howerton. Okay. Um, she's now in Florida. Um, but she came in and, and really helped us at that sort of year five mm-hmm. mark once mm-hmm. we were established and got past that, you know, 2008. Oh, hump. yeah. That's a tough time for everybody. Yeah. Um, once we got past that and we had the reimagination of the restaurant, mm-hmm. um, she came in and said, let me run your restaurant. And I need you to become owners now. Wow. And so that really helped us. We were able to reluctantly at some times <laughs> take a step back yeah. and look at our restaurant from up here, which allows you to, you know, keep looking at it, you know, keep looking at your business plan, right. keep reviewing that. Working on your business instead of in your business. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and it was a great it was really a great gift that she gave us to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. And you know, and, and and now here we are. Now, here on Grind Set, you know, it, it's working on your business, in your business. And since at that five-year mark, you had the privilege to start working on your business, what are some of the key performance metrics that you looked at to manage the Majestic Grill? Cash flow. Hmm. Cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. <laughs> like, like, the Memphis, like the Memphis guy. Cash yeah. Nothing but cash flow. <laughs> <laughs> cash flow, um, cash flow, um, Cash flow. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Uh, well, and also for us, you know, we had our our pillars mm-hmm. in our business plan that we based our company on, mm-hmm. and we had goals that we set based on those pillars. Okay. Um, and one of the biggest things that we wanted to do was offer health insurance for yeah. all of our employees. Wow. Um, and it's and major. It's really hard for a restaurant to be able, to, an independent restaurant, to right. be able to do that. And this was before um, the Affordable Care Act. Yes. Exactly. Um, so um, because we had it in writing, because we had made that a goal, mm-hmm. we were able to advance towards that. Wow. Mm-hmm. And so for our fifth anniversary, we were, we were able to announce to our staff at our employee party that they were getting medical, dental, and vision. That's a that's huge so that's, awesome. that's a huge announcement and a huge sacrifice mm-hmm. um, for an independent restaurant. Right. Wow. Um, talk about what cash flow looks like for a restaurant. Because on Grind Set, it's the cash flow is probably the biggest lesson business owners have to learn. So, what does cash flow look like for a restaurant? It can be scary <laughs> at times. Um, I'll, t- I'll tell you a, a story. When we first opened, um, we went on a, a little vacation back to Ireland to see um, Patrick's family. And our AGM at the time accidentally ran payroll twice. Oh my. And when you have a 10,000 square foot restaurant, you mm-hmm. have a large payroll. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> that was a scary moment. Um, luckily, we have really good partners um, in our bank. Yes. Right. And our choice of bank. <laughs> and, um, and, and they were able to help us and, and catch us up and, and fix that. And all of our vendors were very. <laughs> Now, you don't have to confirm and deny, but this is a shameless plug for First Horizon Bank, just in case. But go ahead. <laughs> Mama's the word. Um, but we, um, you know, you go through so many um, 
so many iterations. And, and with cash flow, so you're constantly looking at it. You have got to keep your eye on the ball. Um, you know, you're, you want to have a chunk of money in the bank. Right. You never know when your water heater is going to bust. Mm. Mm. Today mm-hmm. happened. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You never know when that oven's going to go out. You never know when um, when you're going to. And kitchen equipment's expensive, right? Um, so you're constantly. You want to get to that point where you can finally have a decent chunk of money in the bank mm-hmm. that's just there for those emergencies or to get you through those slow months. Right now, the convention center shut down downtown. Downtown restaurants are feeling it. Wow, um, I didn't so, think about that. Yeah, so we, we're not having those, you know. The overflow of all the events and people from all over the country that are coming here. Yeah, and, and we're in a lucky position that we're going on 14, yeah. that you know, we're more established so we can weather this. Yes. You know, we, mm-hmm. we worry about our smaller restaurant friends who, wow. who are facing some lean times. You don't think about those things. Um, so one of the things I'd love to know, you know, you talked about your history and, and the transition of the restaurant, but what drives you now? What keeps you excited about work every day? Great question. Thank you. One of the things that we always say at the Majestic Grill is we're not in the restaurant business. Hmm. We're in the downtown Memphis business. Oh, Okay. Is that why you're on the Downtown Memphis Commission? That as is a, <laughs> as a chairwoman. That is that is why. Yeah. Um we we really feel that, you know, it, it's it's not just about us. It's not just what happens within our four yeah. walls. Sure. Um you know, we were real involved in the food truck legislation because we want vibrancy. You yes. know, right. I I want a taco truck set up across the street from my restaurant, sure. you know, not just selfishly because yeah. I like tacos. <laughs> but, <laughs> right. But because it's vibrancy, you know, yeah. I I want more restaurants downtown i want mm-hmm. more you know a f- rising tide floats all boats yes. it's, a, it's a cliche for a reason yeah um in and we work to make sure that all of our downtown restaurant friends are you know have the resources that they need mm-hmm. that we're involved in the community that we're helping you know helping other memphians mm-hmm. be able to achieve their dreams and and we really focus on um you know, it's, it's really nice. We have a, a management team of about 13 now. Okay. So we're really able to focus in on the little things and work with our staff. And, okay, how do we see? Who, who, who can we have? We have staff that's been with us since day one. That's incredible. You know, the majority of our staff has been with us 10, 12, yeah. you know, 14 years. Mm-hmm. How do we make them better? How do we make sure that they mm-hmm. have a secure future? Um, so that's, that's what we like to focus on. I love that. So where can we find more information about the Majestic Grill? Website, location, phone numbers, social media, et cetera. Sure, absolutely. We are located on Main Street, 145 Main Street, one block north of the Orpheum. <laughs> <laughs> we have a wonderful website, uh, majesticgrill.com. Grill has an E on the end of it. Yeah. You can uh, learn all about our history on there. We post our daily specials on there, mm-hmm. see our menus, uh, see about private events. We do a lot of private events. Mm-hmm. On and there holiday parties. and holiday parties, we do a lot of fun <laughs> stuff. And the, holi- the holidays are majestic. Our phone number is uh 901 and we have um Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, yes. we're, we're all over it. So come, come follow us, and, and we have a lot of fun. We've been playing a lot with all the Bluff City Law people lately. <laughs> oh they've, uh, they've been in a lot. They've been filming a lot with us, so we're so excited. Cool. <laughs> so fingers crossed they get called in for a second season. Well, Denny, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I learned a lot. It's a Me great story as well. Me too. Well, hopefully we can get you back on a future episode, but... You've been listening to Grind Set, powered by the Kazukian Network, and Cynthia and I will be right back after the break with your major keys and woman power moment. Grind Set on the Kazukian Network. Keeping it real, right, and funky. I think one of the things that makes a difference is having an African-American man who leads as the executive editor. I'm always about this girl power. One of the other things we've been talking about is youth and their interaction with the justice system. Funky Politics on the Kazookian Network. Welcome back to Grind Set. I hope you enjoyed the wonderful love story of Denny and Patrick Riley, as well as the magical and majestic history of the Majestic Grill and that business, and as well learn a little bit about the restaurant business as well. Um, I want to share the major keys, and there were quite a few. Um, Zero on the major keys is when you're starting a business, be it a restaurant or any company, expect to work crazy, crazy hours in the beginning. And that's been a theme across all of our entrepreneurs. 
One is restaurants are similar to being event planning. An event planner. You're doing the events daily, though. And so it's always something new. Two, value your corporate background. I know you want to start a business. You want to go into entrepreneurship. But the skills that you're learning today will be extremely valuable in your future entrepreneurial journey. Um, Three, your business plan will change, be it six months, 12 months, a few years from it. Expect it to and be dynamic in the process of business. Also, have a marketing budget. You don't have a business if no one knows about it. Um, (laughs) And some of the advice that Denny recommends for new business owners is three years of savings to go into business. You may not need it, but it's always grateful to have or it's always better to have cash when you need it and then when you're starting up something especially as a restaurant there will be kinks and there will be issues danny ran a please forgive us menu right if you're working on it be transparent let people know and they'll love you all the more for it seven understand your audience Uh, danny and patrick ran a survey And when you get the answers, adjust accordingly. Use that market research. And then how you tell your story matters. Menus, items then change tremendously, but how the story was told did. Hire nice people. Take time to yourself. And always, always, always manage cash flow. So my woman power quote for the week is a strong woman accepts both compliments and criticism graciously, knowing that it takes both sun and rain for a flower to grow. Wow. So listening to Denny's story, uh, she was able to reassess the business, understand that she needed to the buy in of the city of Memphis. Yes. Hey, Memphis, what do we need to change about our restaurant? So mm. you have to, as a woman, know that you need both to succeed. Yeah. That's wonderful. All I know is I'm going to the Majestic Grill tomorrow for lunch. I'm going for dinner. Maybe for brunch this weekend. Absolutely. Um, All three. I bought in. (laughs) You've been listening to Grind Set, powered by the Kazookian Network, and we'll see you next episode. Grind Set, executive producer, Epicenter. Grind Set is directed, produced, and distributed by Kazookian.